we look at things in a very bad way in biology. We think of the human body as flesh and bones rather than energy. The last two days, you've been hearing us say that it's the life force in the food that actually brings you back to life and prevents disease. And this life force only comes from living things. Just take a moment and think. When the spring comes here in March and April, and you're ready to plant a garden, if you took a seed and cooked it and planted it, would it ever grow? Of course not. So how can you take a cooked food and ingest it and think that you're going to grow or benefit from it? So we're going to take you on a little voyage here. I don't know if we can reduce the lights a little bit here. But if not, I hope you can see this. And we're going to start in an important place, in the middle of the universe. And out in the middle of the universe, the Earth is just one little tiny piece of energy. And as we go through the planets, we start to see this is an endless, endless world we live in. And there is no beginning, and there is no end. This is a human concept, because we're so frightened, we need to make things small. The universe is an endless gathering of energy that we have named and labeled in our own restrictive imagery. As we draw closer to Earth, the five basic components that establish order that we can identify are molecules, atoms, protons, neutrons, and the most important, the elusive string. Now, quantum biologists and quantum physicists understand the string is what makes all things work. And that string is not looked at in our medical schools today, even our naturopathic schools today. The structure of matter. Molecules are the surface of any structure that is like the shell of an egg. The second layer, the atom, is the interior with the nuclei being the proton and the neutron. Ultimately, this is all generated and possibly created by the invisible strings that are quite likely to be the origin of the universe, life as we know it, and the expansive web of connectivity that governs all. Now, this is actually photographs of the very first life form. As life began with the evolution of time, what we know is vitamin C and nitrogen spawned these microalgaes. So nitrogen, as you know, if you're a gardener or a farmer, makes things grow. And vitamin C, which we think is a supplement, when they came together, they created an electrical charge that actually gave birth to the very first life form. These little algaes that you see, the microalgaes, are actually what let you come alive. This was what started even the human being. Now, when that little algae, that little microalgae, started to de evolve, inside of it, it created something called a chloroplast. A chloroplast was the very first solar collector. Because what this life form knew, just like the yogi showed you there, when he smiled at 104 and pointed to this and said, that's the best food, that all life on this earth comes from the sun. Every drop of life comes from the sun. And if you just use a little sense, you don't have to have a lot of sense, just a little sense, you know that the leaf of the plant is how we should sustain life. Once we go beyond the leaf of a plant, we start to destroy our health and that of the earth we live on. Now, this is actually a bacteria, one of the many life forms that were created, starting with the algae. This gave birth to oxygen so that a limitless wide array of life forms sprang forth. And bacteria, by the way, is not all bad. 
Some of us that understand nutrition know that it's bacteria that's healthy in your body, in your intestinal tract, that actually creates your immune system. And so it's an enormously wonderful thing. But through evolution, many of the bacteria became criminals, and they're not so good for you at this point. Now, when you go to the bathroom now, from this moment on, wash your hands. That's what you're carrying around with you. <laughs> bacteria, an early life form, gave birth to millions of other plants, creatures, and even killer microbes. There are many in the biological community today who believe the evolutionary morphing of bacteria creates two-thirds of the human body. So here we are thinking we're human, and we're exceptional, and we're special, and now the top biologists in the world, including scientists like me, know that two-thirds of what we are is bacteria. Isn't that amazing? So whenever you think you're fancy, just remember you're only bacteria. <laughs> this is a virus you see coming forth. And so many other forms came about, too, through this evolution, on friendly microbes like viruses with their innate initiative to use human cells as their host, work as a double-edged sword by strengthening our anatomical resolve and at the same time battling our immune system. Now, viruses are really smart, just like spiral Ks. They know if they twist themselves deep inside of your cell that the immune system won't attack it. So this is why viruses kill people quite often if they're weak. If they have an emotional weakness, like the doctor said, the most important way to be well is to have a positive thought, a positive vision. And the way we get weak quicker than any other way is to be negative. And of course, then if you eat pro improperly and the environment you live in and work in is not clean, and pollute it with chemicals and heavy metals, you further weaken your body. When the developed immune system fails, this can always cause disease and potential death. Many researchers and physicians on the cutting edge of science today think that the central cause for cancer is viruses. And the more I look at this, I've been doing this work for 41 years now, I agree with it. Now, maybe the virus does not directly cause the cancer, but it weakens the cells in the body. And when the cells are weak, they're very vulnerable. And cancers can come and eat them up. When combined with poor lifestyle habits, a plethora of man-made chemicals that pervade the environment and, and physiological misstep is no wonder that cancer is now unsurpassed the number one place as the deadliest disease. Now, when I began my work, cancer was a problem, but it was only in North America and Europe, about 24% of the population that contracted cancer. Now in Europe and North America, 50% of the population, one half of the population will get cancer in your lifetime. Why? Because as we destroy our environment and kill the birds that eat the bugs, that eat the bacteria, we have more microbes, more bacteria, more viruses, more fungus, more yeast. 